Hello and uh, welcome to module six uh, on acting on feedback. Slide one. Feedback is required both for the institution as institutional feedback and also for program feedback. Both feedbacks can be formal and informal. Now, how does your institution interpret formal feedback? Meaning, are there any instruments or methods of feedback required by the ministry or the external quality assurance agency or professional bodies? And what type of data are you getting feedback from? Now, all institutions use questionnaires and surveys amongst other ways of getting feedback. But when you do this with regards to students, are the students being informed about the results? And in what way are they being informed? Through emails, through social media, through a video? Think of the examples of good practice you have. And if you would like to better your action on this type of feedback, how you communicate it back. For example, if the feedback is on a lecturer, whether it's positive feedback or negative. Is the lecturer informed and how is he informed and by whom? Do you wait for a yearly appraisal to inform the lecturer or do you this informally? Now, if your institution has moved to online questionnaires, as most have done recently, especially for student feedback, has this resulted in a lower rate of response? And if yes, how will you act as an institution on such feedback of a low response? If you get a low response, it is important that this is discussed along with necessary stakeholders, and that is also including the students themselves. But it could also be through the students' council because they are also the voice of the students. And the students' council can come in for dissemination as part of the action. For informal feedback, you can invite the students or the alumni over at the institute, the university, for a cup of tea or lunch and discuss informally. Whatever you need to discuss could be about the institution itself or the programs. The important point is that such feedback should also be then discussed at management levels and a short report on the actions submitted. But it also must be followed to see if those actions were actually acted upon and who's going to oversee all this. It is important that whether feedback is formal or informal, the loop is closed, meaning the communication has done and ticked as acted upon or not acted upon and reasons given if it is not acted upon, because obviously anything can happen. In slide four, I am going to refer to program feedback. So there's definitely feedback from lecturer to student and sometimes vice versa as well. And this depends also on the design of the program and also the modules. Now, how do you deal with formative and summative feedback of modules? Do you have a policy and procedure for this? Can the students be divided into groups, for example, by levels, by programs? So it's important that you do meetings for feedback discussions. If this feedback uh, is uh, valuable for, for the students, and you can do this in the uh, form of forums, gathering students and academic staff together, also sometimes the administrative staff, or once again, you can discuss this as students council and they will also disseminate any type of feedback for the action required. In this slide, I speak about institutional feedback. So we're speaking about feedback on institutional data, for example, about student enrollment, their progression, and the success rates. For example, it's very important to uh, get feedback about the jobs, what jobs exist and how do I, I apply for them and if they get them, and how long it took a student after graduation to find a job, even the level at what level he is employed, like a manager, supervisor, the salaries attached to them, and the satisfaction of the job. 
because from this feedback, you can discuss this and perhaps use all this for marketing purposes. For acting on feedback, you will need some reports. And I will give you some examples of what type of reports can be fit for your institution, or you can think of other examples. For example, an annual student evaluation by study program and level is uh, important. As much as annual data collection of all study programs on the basis of set indicators. You can also have reports on analysis of social and financial data on student grants and housing, because sometimes we tend to forget this about acting on this type of feedback. And also a survey, for example, of entering students to identify those at risk of failing because of family situations or any other risks as determined by the institution. So all this must be factored in this feedback and what type of action we are going to take. Obviously, there always needs to be discussion with the necessary stakeholders and perhaps the internal quality assurance can oversee all this as part of the action taken. Therefore, key performance indicators need to be determined, for example, like retention, the pass rates, the diversity of student profiles. So each year these are discussed and whatever action is needed, it is taken and communicated accordingly. For example, you might discuss low pass rates on particular modules and take a decision about this result. You might want to discuss dropouts. Examples are non-starters considered as dropouts or do you have other separate statistics? For example, at the Institute of Tourism Studies in Malta, we make a difference between non-starters and dropouts for our feedbacks and actions. For us, non-starters are those who applied to start a program but never showed up to start it. What do we do with this feedback? We try to see why they did not turn up and what further action can be taken, if any. Did we lose those students to other institutions, to the working world? Can we communicate better with these students to guide them better? Perhaps we did not guide them best? This all depends how the institutions interpret the situation. So when we're gathering all this feedback, we discuss it in the appropriate fora and we come up with actions. Who are going to carry those actions? Then we need to determine who is going to carry out and by what timeline we need to carry that out. Now, this is another example. Let us say the institution has a centralized quality assurance system and the vice rector is responsible for quality assurance. He receives the data and reports analyzes them and produces a general report himself. The problem can be with the interpretation of data by himself because he would be too far removed to know the contextual details. For example, he doesn't know the difference between dropouts and non-starters, just to give an exaggerated example. But this could be one case where we need to be sure that the feedback is being understood and interpreted properly for the best action to follow. This is also feedback for program reviews. I would like to ask you, do you have internal and external members to review programs every five years? Is their role just advisory? Do they write a self-assessment report for their areas? And if there is negative feedback, do you get this stuff on the defensive here? And what are the defined criteria for student satisfaction? How do we know that the students are satisfied? What is the evidence that we get from the feedback so we can act upon this? Do you have a data system which can handle all this? This is important, how you document things, record them, and to be able to discuss them. It is very important to plan even how you're going to collect feedback and act upon it. So the university or the educational institution can ask all faculties to produce a plan with targets to review this plan and present to the university leadership for continuous improvement, whether it's for the institution or, or programs. So there should be feedback on the self-assessment report, an action plan created, and ask yourselves who will oversee that this is actually done. Leading change. Acting on feedback is necessary for a leader to bring about change. 
Now, what is actually required from a leader after feedback to bring about change? So the leadership in practice should have these elements. The leader must establish a sense of urgency after feedback, discuss immediately with necessary stakeholders. You might need to drive people out of their comfort zone. Make sure you, along with the necessary stakeholders, will move in the right direction without making it too complicated, because otherwise it will become difficult. So try to communicate the action to be taken through any means fit for your purpose to achieve the change in a simple manner as much as possible. These are more tips for leadership in practice. Encourage risk taking to achieve something new, which is non-traditional, what you used to do before or part of your history. Now, this is difficult because you might need to remove powerful ind individuals who resist change to bring action to life from the feedback that you have. So you need to go step by step. If the action for change requires several steps, you might need to reward employees for this. And also celebrate the improvements so you gain credibility of your actions. And sometimes you will need to institutionalize new approaches. Now, before going to suggest to you what you can further read, I would like to give you one last more tip. As an institution, you can create a short video about the actions you have taken on feedback, whether they are institutional or program-wise. Let me give you an example of an institutional video feedback action that you can do. For example, the students would have said that they want more bicycle racks for them at the university or any other educational institution because there are a lot of students who cycle their way to the university. So while somebody like the rector or somebody else is on the video explaining that they have added these um, um, cycling or any other um, uh, suggestions that the students would have made, you will be videoing the actual cycle rex at the time he's speaking. Rather than uh, focusing on the person speaking, you will be focusing on the actual evidence of what you have done for the students. Or perhaps the students would have said they want more gluten-free items in their canteen. So again, when you are shooting the video, you concentrate on serving the food, uh, which is gluten-free. I think nowadays uh, most young people uh, like these short, short videos, but even the management, because of time consumption, would like to see short videos instead of having um, uh, long lectures. And this would be ideal as a tip for acting on feedback. If you would like to read more about this topic, you can read Examining Quality Culture, Part 2, Processes, Tools, Participation, Ownership and Bureaucracy, EU a publications 2011. I would like to thank you for listening. Thank you very much.